Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inuzor Education. Um, today I would like to uh, talk about using semiconductors uh, in electronics primarily to make diodes. Now diodes, as we know from previous lectures, are such electronic devices which allow the current to go only in one direction. So if you have some kind of a diode it has well, basically two ends and uh, if you put electricity plus and minus in one way the current will actually go through. If you change the polarity the current will not go through. Now before we were talking about implementation of this particular device using electronic vacuum tubes um, and obviously uh, you're welcome to go to the previous lectures where it's all explained. Now it's a completely different concept based on semiconductivity which will implement the same functionality. The current will go only in one direction and if you change the polarity it will not. Um, now this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens implemented on um, unizor.com. Well, unizor.com is an educational uh, website with, where you can find another prerequisite course, uh, Math for Teens. Uh, so I strongly recommend you to familiarize yourself with all the mathematical concepts used, used in physics and Math for Teens course provides it. Uh, well, and obviously it stands by itself as the course of mathematics. Um, what else? Well, the, the site is completely free. There are no ads, no strings attached. You don't even have to sign in if you don't want to. Um, okay, now this lecture actually uh, is preceded by another where I basically explain what is P-type semiconductors, N-type semiconductors. I will well, briefly repeat this type of thing in this lecture, but uh, again, I strongly recommend you to to take the course basically, where where all the topics are linearly related, uh, related and and logically related to each other. Okay, so we're talking about diodes implemented as a PN junction kind of. Okay, so let me start again from very brief. Um, a review of what semiconductors actually are. Now, consider the atom of silicon. Now, the atom of silicon has certain number of electrons, but we are concerned only um, in electrons which are on the outer uh, orbit, which is called valence electrons, and there are four of them. One, two, three, four. Now, also there is another very important thing that atoms are trying well as if they're uh, some kind of uh, entities with, with, with mind they're trying to have uh, eight electrons on their outer orbit valence electrons and well obviously it's not always possible because right now we have certain number of protons inside the nucleus and certain number of electrons and the outer orbit contains only four. But if you have another atom of silicon nearby, and each of those atoms also have four electrons, Then, what's very interesting, these pairs of electrons serve both atoms, this one and this time. Well, you can say that they are maybe rotating around some kind of a midpoint, or I don't know really how it is actually um, arranged inside. But now this one can count four of its own and four of neighboring electrons and and, and and this one also counts 
uh, four of its own and four of the neighbor neighboring uh, uh, electrons. These are related to each other um, with some kind of a covalent bonds. So this is a concept which I have explained in the previous lecture. So there is basically, it, it's like a force, if you wish, which forces these together and basically um, count as valence electrons for both this one and this one. And this pair is for this and this. So these covalent bonds are holding um, much stronger the whole structure, basically in, in enabling crystalline structure of the silicon as a material. So that's all about silicon. Now let's talk about semiconductors. In case of semiconductors, we are introducing certain impurities into silicon. So sometimes we are replacing certain atoms of silicon with atoms of, let's say, phosphorus. What's important is, for element which we are adding, is to have five electrons on the outer orbit, five valence electrons. So what happens? Well, these four will be related through covalent bonds with neighboring atoms, and this one will not have any covalent bond. Well, obviously there is a bond between this electron and the nucleus. Nucleus has also corresponding number of protons, same as number of electrons. So there is a uh, positive to negative attraction, obviously. And that's what keeps this particular um, electron near this atom. But not as strongly as all other valence electrons because all other are also connected through a covalent bond to a different atoms of silicon in this case. This is also silicon. This is silicon. This is silicon. And this one has no covalent bond, so it doesn't participate in the crystalline structure. That's very important. Now, another kind of impurity which we can introduce is when instead of four electrons we have three. Boron, element boron, has three electrons in the outer orbit, three valence electrons. One, two, and three. These are connected, but this electron of the silicon has no covalent bond connecting to this one. So again, this one is held only by its attraction to the nucleus and not by any covalent bond. So basically you can say that this is some kind of a hole, if you wish. Now, the uh, crystalline structure and covalent bonds actually are very strong. And sometimes uh, what might happen is, let's say, this particular electron, since it's still, you know, on the outer orbit, if excited by something like heating or, or um, applying some voltage, for instance, it can actually start acting very, uh, very actively, <laughs> and uh, it can jump and fill up this particular hole. But that would make this hole now. So we will restore the covalent bonds in this particular case, but this hole will jump to this particular thing. So we're talking about holes as basically absence of valent electron. Um, but in this case, again, the hole might actually migrate. It might move from one place to another. That's all about how semiconductors are arranged. Now, if no excitement introduced into this particular picture, no heat, no external voltage, no sunlight or whatever else can excite electrons, well, the whole thing is neutral, even with p impurity, because impurity has less protons in this case and less uh, electrons. 
in case of a phosphorus, for instance, we have an extra proton and an extra electron. So the whole thing is electrically neutral. However, existence of extra electrons or extra hole in the whole structure actually makes certain differences when some 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 activity actually uh, is observed. If some excitement of these electrons can be observed based on, as I was saying, heating or sunlight or electric electric voltage, etc. So, those um, uh, semiconductors with impurity uh, that introduce the extra electron is called n-type, and those uh, like boron, for instance, where there is a deficiency of electrons in the structure, in the crystalline structure, they're called p-type. N stands for negative, p stands for positive, because hole can be considered as a positive um, uh, charge, well, neg uh, electron is negative charge, the same thing as in, in, in any other electrical kind of uh, thing. What is positive? Positive means it's, it, it's lacking electrons, deficiency of electrons. So the hole is like a positive charge. So we have p-type and n-type. Now, what happens, uh, let's say, let's talk about b, uh, boron introduced. So it's a p-type semiconductor. What happens if I will apply plus and minus to the whole body of semiconductor? Well, let's just think about it. <coughs> we have basically two um, important forces which are acting in this case, well, in any case. One force is the attraction between positive and negative uh, charge. So protons, for instance, in the uh, nucleus are attracting electrons around it. At the same time, we have covalent bonds, which are also holding electrons together and make the um, uh, crystalline structure. At the same time, we have plus and minus here, which are also kind of attracting. Plus attracting electrons, minus repels electrons. So what happens in this particular case um, if the voltage becomes stronger and stronger? Well, if it's very weak, nothing happens. But as soon as we are trying to increase the voltage a little bit, what happens? Well, electrons can actually be attracted. So what happens in this case? Let's say this electron is attracted here. Now there is a hole in between, right? Instead of this electron, there is a hole in crystalline structure. Now the covalent bonds are strong, and some other um, uh, electron can jump and replace this. So this becomes whole. This covalent bond becomes whole. Now uh, we, we have, we do have already some hole. So the hole actually will move. And this hole will also be filled up by some, because there is a general movement of electrons towards the positive. At the same time, minus provides certain uh, supply of new electrons. So as soon as certain number of electrons migrated here, this becomes, the whole thing becomes positively charged and attracts electrons from minus. And they will replace certain places here and uh, to, to make certain things whole, but plus will still continue doing what it's doing. So again, the holes, um, the electrons will move towards uh, plus and the holes basically will move to an opposite direction. The stronger the potential difference between plus and minus is, um, well, the faster, the more intense this process will occur. So there will be an electrical current. So that's why they're called semiconductors. In a, in, a, in a weak difference of potentials, there is no current. But uh, So it's not really, it's, I, I, it's insulator. But if there is some kind of a excitement, pressure, it becomes uh, conductive. OK. Now, what if it's uh, n-type? What if it's n-type? So we have a phosphorus and extra electron here. Well, same thing. 
electrons, there are extra electrons that will go here, and now this becomes positive because the proton inside, extra proton, is positive. It, it, it lost these electrons, so it will attract electrons from here. So again, we will have the electrons are moving. With proper voltage, this actually occurs. That's why it's called semiconductors. Sometimes, it, if, it's, if it's a small voltage, it doesn't really conduct electricity, but with a, with, with a substantial voltage. And substantial, I, I don't mean hundreds of uh, volts. We're talking about three, five, this type of voltage. The, um, and obviously, it also depends on how much uh, impurities we have introduced, how many extra electrons or extra holes in case of p-type or n-type um, we have. The more holes or ele extra electrons we have, well, the better um, conductivity will be, obviously. Okay, and now we will consider this junction thing. That's the purpose of this lecture. What happens if we will connect together? So let's say we have this um, P type and this N type of semiconductor, which means here we have extra electrons, extra electrons which are not participating in construction of the crystalline structure, not bonded by covalent bonds. So if you have something like a phosphorus added to silicon, we have these extra, sil uh, extra electrons which are not engaged into any kind of a covalent bond. So they're, well, they're not free because they're still attracted to its own atom, but with a small push, small um, uh, activation, they might actually jump. And even in a normal um, condition, um, these valence electrons, which are not really um, uh, bonded together by covalent bond into a crystalline structure, they're still fluctuating. Not a lot, but, but still. Now, on the p-type, we have holes, which I will put as pluses, because again, plus means lack of negativity, lack of electrons. So there are certain holes here throughout the whole body. If it's a boron with silicon, boron has only three electrons uh, on the outer orbit, so we have hole basically. Um, so you see these covalent bonds and uh, electrostatic uh, forces between plus and minus, both are participating in this game. So what happens now if nothing, uh, if no voltage is applied anywhere? Well, there is certain migration, as I was saying, um, just random walking of these extra electrons because they are not covalently bonded with other electrons, only the um, electrostatic forces, and they are not as strong. So if there is certain degree of activity, some electrons can actually jump here. Now, what happens? Well, they are disappearing from here, and they are converting into neutral from the covalent uh, bond viewpoint atoms in the borderline, near the border. They fill the holes. Now, strong forces, covalent bonds, are holding these electrons. So as soon as this electron jump here, well, the covalent bond actually is formed and it's, well, relatively stable. It doesn't move any further, this particular electron, because it maintains the crystalline structure of the semiconductor on the top of the p-type. 
okay, but what happens with electrostatic forces? Since electrons move from here to here and are held here by covalent bonds, this thing used to be neutral, right? But now it becomes negative because the electrons are moved here. And this becomes positive. So the whole thing now becomes electrically charged. Okay, what next? Well, this negative charge prevents new electrons from moving further. So there is a certain layer of negative charge formed by those electrons which jumped and were captured by covalent bonds. And there is certain positive charge in the area near the border, near this junction, uh, on the n-type. And the process actually ends, doesn't really move any, any further. There are a certain number of uh, extra electrons here which are filling up the holes, and there is a certain uh, lack of electrons here, but we don't really need them to maintain the crystalline structure because they did not participate in the crystalline structure. It was an n-type. It was an extra electron on each atom of phosphorus. So the process ends. Now, what happens? <coughs> well, let's say we put plus here and minus here. Attached. Some kind of a contact. Well, now we have introduced yet another electrostatic force. This is plus. This is negatively charged. So the electrons actually now might move there. Well, if the voltage is sufficient enough, because again, covalent bonds are still acting, but if this uh, attraction I is stronger, then these extra electrons will move towards the positive and go to whatever the battery is. Okay? Now what happens? Well, now this becomes again positive, not positive, sorry, holes, doesn't become, it becomes neutral, electrically neutral, but, uh, uh, but the crystalline structure uh, remains with holes because these electrons which were used to basically uh, uh, put the structure together uh, will, uh, will migrate towards the plus which means that there is no more barrier of electrons here. And extra electrons here can continue this migration and fill up these holes. Now, this becomes, uh, again, well, it used to be positive, now it's uh, even more positive, but we do have a source of electrons because this is a negative. So this is positive, this is negative, so electrons will go here and will be extra electrons which do not fit into crystalline structure. So all these electrons which don't fit the crystalline structure are potentially migrants to fill up the holes here. But as soon as they do, this uh, plus again will attract them uh, and, and they will go again to the uh, positive uh, electrode. <coughs> And this process will continue. This will supply new electrons to the n-type. These will be migrating into the um, uh, p-type to fill up the holes. And uh, this uh, positive charge will attract them even further, again, leaving the holes bare again, uh, which will be substituted with new electrons. So the electrons will move all the time from negative to the positive and the current in the opposite direction is what if we will do a completely opposite thing but if this is minus and this is plus well if this is minus these will not attract will not be attracted, so they will remain in the covalent um, uh, bond structure. So they might actually be uh, 
uh, kind of pushed back uh, since it's it's the negative right and this is negative there is a force which pushes us back but again it it's not strong enough to um, basically push it across the border because there is no covalent bonds here ready for them to be kept you see when electrons moved there there are additional forces both to fill up the covalent bonds and uh, attraction of the plus but if electrons move move here there is no covalent bonds which are ready to grab these electrons and the force of uh, repelling is not sufficient to move electrons here so that's why it's semiconductor it all depends on the level of voltage level of uh, um, um, uh, density of uh, impurities in, in both sides etc but definitely uh, under certain circumstances we can think about it that this force is not enough to move actual electro electrons back here because there is no uh, covalent bond available for them uh, which means that these negative electrons which are in the borderline after their migration so it's neutral but it's uh, it, 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 the covalent um, uh, bonds are filled but electrons are still here there are no holes here um, well they will just stay there and they will prevent any other electrons to go this way or that way and the covalent bonds here are strong enough to resist the attraction of this plus so that's exactly where we have to really have some kind of a very um, uh, finely calculated voltage against the covalent bonds. Obviously, if I will put a very strong minus and very strong plus, it will just rip off all the electrons, all the valence electrons from er everywhere. So we're not talking about this. That's not interesting. What's interesting is to have certain uh, in, uh, density of uh, impurities in both cases and certain voltage and it's all calculated um, in such a way that this particular device which is called a PN junction diode will only conduct uh, electricity when electrons are moving this way and not that way that's basically how our diode is arranged this is the PN junction diodes, um, their ma basic principle. So again, what's important is that it works only if there is certain finely calculated balance between um, intensity of the uh, applied voltage on both sides and uh, certain density of um, impurities which we introduce into n-type and, and, and p-type. If it's all done correctly, and obviously by now we, we have a very good experience how to do it correctly, we will have this diode working for certain particular voltage. So obviously it's low voltage, um, all our computers are basically low voltage computers and semiconductors basically help in this particular case because it's exactly this range of voltages where they work now we are not talking about technology of how to introduce these impurities how to make this junction etc it's all technological thing which uh, not subject of, uh, of this course at all we are talking about principle and the principle is the covalent bonds are strong the uh, electrostatic uh, attraction and repelling are uh, strong and they are supposed to work in uh, conjunction which with with each other and that's how the whole thing is made I suggest you to read the notes for this lecture on unizor.com you go to physics 14 course uh, electromagnetism and then there is a in a semiconductor uh, part uh, there is a, a lecture about electronics related to semiconductors um, well that's it for today thank you very much and good luck <laughs>